Hello, welcome to the match preview. It's West Ham United against Everton at the London Stadium this Saturday. Me and James are going to go through the game. And James, this is a difficult game for Everton. Not playing well, not mm -hmm. winning. Um, but West Ham are great either at the moment. So therefore, both managers under pressure going into this one. But it's an opportunity for Everton, isn't it, to, to try and get that victory and, and bounce back from the last couple of games. I think um, Lopetegui is under a lot of pressure, mm. so it's a good chance for Everton to get a win and then maybe he gets sacked, but there's a reason why he's under a lot of pressure. Mm. And Hopefully Everton can capitalise on it, but I'm going to doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't seem too confident there, mate. Um, <laughs> no, he is. West Ham lost the first three home games, but they've won the last couple, beat Ipswich 4-1 and beat Manchester United last time out as well, so... It will be tricky. However, they did get beat 3 0 last week of Forest and have lost Alvarez. Of course, he's suspended. Kudos, we know, is out. He's had another two games added to his ban this week for uh, trying to fight the whole of the uh, Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> Stadium the other week. Um, and Nicholas Fulcrug, Lepper Lopeteg, we just said he's going to be out for a while. He's injured. So they have got some injury worries themselves. But for Everton, obviously, very disappointing last week. We lost at Southampton against a team that. We should have beat, let's be honest. Uh, we went there and I think the frustration for a lot of Evertonians and people who've, who've got in touch with us on the channel and that was that every game we seem to make ourselves the underdog, no matter what, we seem scared of the opposition always in every game. I don't know where this mentality has come from. Well, I mean, I do, but, <laughs> you know, that mentality I don't think serves Everton in any way, shape or form. And I think this Saturday the best way to sort of get a result against West Ham, I think, is to go at them. Yeah, but we haven't really got a good history of going at teams recently. I know, but do you not think that this represents the opportunity, though? Because like you've just said, there's a reason why Lopetegui's under pressure, because they, they've lost five of their games like we have, so we've both lost 50% of our games so far. So I think if you're them, you'd be saying, go with Everton. Yeah. But that's why I'm saying it from our perspective, we should go with them, surely. And to be fair, we've been much better away from home than we have been at mm. home recently. It's a, it's a good chance, but... You're not confident. <laughs> I'm not confident you don't, You're not selling this at I'm all not. to me, James. You, you look terrified. <laughs> you, you setting our team up. Um, the manager in the press conference has said that in Njai looks okay, which is good. The core should be back. He missed out last week. Obviously, Seamus Coleman, he was on the bench last week, is missing this week with a hamstring injury, but that won't affect the start in 11. The big question on everyone's lips is, does Jared Brantway play this week? He's been subbed the last couple of games. Come on, that's the views Michael Keane as an emergency striker, but would you play Jared Brantway this weekend? I think he's got to play, realistically. Mm. He's our best player, and I think he should have probably played the last two games when he was on the bench as well. But Dice did hint that there's a chance that he could be playing a five-back as well, mm. which would change it up a bit. But no matter what, I think Brantway's got to start. Yeah. Gives us that control, doesn't he? He's good on the ball. He's he's obviously got a bit of pace about him as well. And um he is our best defender. Like you said, there's a reason why he's being linked with clubs for 70 odd million pounds and yeah. none of our other centre backs are, yeah. isn't it? There's a reason for that. And are you a believer in playing your best team at all times, or are you sort of well, if someone comes in and plays well, you leave them out? I think if someone comes in and plays well, then yet they deserve the chance. But I don't think you should forget about what Branthwaite's done. You know, mm -hmm. he had the year best best player and then start the season off. He had a bit of an injury, but he started well as well. So I think you can't really forget that. And especially when we're in such a like, ish, bit of a problem with the season, mm -hmm. um, he's got to come back in, really. Yeah. Let's just get rid of the noise of people talking about Michael Keane all the time and stuff and get a bit more positivity at the club. And I think that's what's key at the minute. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it's... It cuts away them questions, doesn't it? You play yeah. Brantwaite and then you get beat. You... It's one less thing for people to have a go with the manager yeah, yeah. or have a go with the team or whatever because you've played your best players. Let's have a look at how West Ham lined up last week um, in their 3-0 defeat at Nottingham Forest. So they went with, obviously, they've, they've gone to a back three with Lopeteg. We haven't did Mav Verapas, Tadebo, Kilman, who they brought in in the summer. Obviously, the two wing backs there, and then Somerville, Paqueta. They had Jared Bowen up last week, but there is talk that Mikel Antonio will 
will be playing up front against Everton this weekend. No Alvarez, like we said, he got sent off last week, so he's out for them. Bowen wide, Antonio through the middle. Antonio, big, powerful. Yeah. Striking knocks people about a little bit. But he has got a little turn of pace as well, and that might be where Branthwaite comes in. Bowen's a different type of striker. He's quick and direct and yeah. does... He has scored against Everton on a couple of occasions, hasn't he? Um, but I think for Everton, Antonio coming in, I think he, that's where Brantwaite does have to play because of the pace, because with yeah. Bowen, he's quick. Paqueta, a little bit different, cleverer player, good on the ball. We'll have to be wary there. But you mentioned three at the back there. It's not something Everton have done a lot over the years, but if the manager is having a, a problem taking Michael Keane out, because he thinks, he, he said it again, he in a press conference, think Keane's had a really good season. Well, if he's having a problem taking him out and he won't leave Tarkovsky out, even though the, he's, the, you know, he's the captain, he's been carrying a bit of an injury. I, yeah. I'm a Tarkovsky fan, I think. Yeah. I don't think he's doing great this season. I don't think he's had a great season, but he is important to us. But if you want to play two, Brantwaite has to play because of the balance for me. So therefore, if you think Michael Keane's the, is unlucky to be dropped, drop yeah. Tarkovsky, but I don't think he's going to do either of that. Yeah. So that's why, I think you're right, that's why he may well go to a three this week and that'll be, it'll be something different, won't it? So if he does go to three, would you stick with knowing how West Ham play with three at the back? And he might go like for like. Would you leave the one striker and have the two wide men? Or would you play, there's some talk about playing better with Dominic Calvert-Lewin. What, are you thinking, would you do that or would you use and die off, off maybe one of the strikers? I think I'd use and die off one of the strikers. Yeah, yeah just yeah. utilise like his pace and like his technical ability. Mm. And then he can help, whether he starts Calvert-Lewin or Beto, mm. he can just help feed the ball into them. So Calvert-Lewin has someone at least to knock it down to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or Beto, him, him and die together could cause a bit of chaos that would like unsettle the West Ham defence mm. because the full-backs they have as well, or quite good defensively, like Juan Pesaka. Mm. So I think it's important you get people who are a bit like a bit, bit of pace and a bit tricky mm. to give them a real like challenge. Yeah, definitely. Because Juan Pesaka, he is that's what he's that's his strength, isn't it? Is that yeah. almost go man for man? And that's why if you did go sort of three, I'd personally I'd go rather than three four three. I think I'd go three five two and have two strikers right up there. It could be in Jai. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to be really bold and. The, not really Sean Dyche's strong suit. You'd have and Jai off the two strikers and, yeah. and two midfield players behind who just the job is to literally shift for you. I can't quite see Sean Dyche doing that, going totally the opposite to what he does. But in Jai behind two strikers would be someone who picks the ball up and travels with it, and then you've got two runners. That would open up West Ham up a little bit, but don't really see that happening. And, that, and maybe it would make sense to sort of have him just off one one of the two strikers yeah. and then to give them something to think about because I think if we just go out with what we've been doing every week might be just too predictable for West Ham and definitely like I said they've won the last two home games you know it's a difficult place to go although Everton have, have beat West Ham away more than he beat anyone else in the Premier League so it's but a little bit hit and miss at the London Stadium we've won a few down there and, and yeah. obviously we've lost a few so um, the player we have picked out as the danger man for West Ham is unsurprisingly Jared Bowen, let's have a look at his stats. There we go, he's played 10 games this season. He's got three goals from an XG of 1.92. He's got two assists and he's created four big chances for the Hammers. And if you see on a sheet map, it's predominantly down that right-hand side. Um, he's a threat, isn't he? The, the lads regularly score goals for West Ham since he moved from Hull, whether it be the Premier League, whether it be Europe for them. Mm. He's obviously played in the Euros for England as well in the summer, or albeit should have got more time probably. But he's a danger man, isn't he? Someone we're going to have to watch out for. I think as well, West Ham has struggled a bit with a striker and he's filled in a lot mm. and he's always done well. Mm. And he's just got that pace and he's good at finishing as well. So I think it's definitely a threat yeah. all the time. Yeah, we're talking of working with a spell as well with Paqueta and Antonio, definitely something we're going to have to watch out for. This is how Everton lined up last week. So obviously we're talking about you know maybe making a change. What are you what are you thinking from this? Because obviously went with the four last week. Michalenko, Young at the fullbacks, obviously Tarkovsky, Michael Keane in the middle. The two of Garnet and Mangala with Dwight McNeil in the ten and Jai Lindstrom and Calvert Lewin. The core wasn't there last week, mm -hmm. so we don't know whether 
that would have been Sean Dyche's preferred midfield last week or whether it would have been Abdoulaye Decore mm -hmm. in there. Mangala came in, obviously Decore played at Ipswich when Everton won down there. Um, do you think he's going to come straight back into the side this weekend? We've already mentioned Brantwaite might come in. Yeah. Not sure whether he'll swap Beto for Dom. Yeah. I think he'll still go with Calvaloon. He was talking up his off-the-ball stuff today in the in the press conference. But what do you think about the midfield? Because obviously the core for a long time played in the number 10 for Sean Dykes, but I think it's diminishing returns in that role. And now when the manager's used them this season, he's used them more yeah. with deeper back. And I actually think he's he's better further back, really. Do you see him breaking up Mangala and Guy and using the core Or... Do you just think the core be on the bench? I think the core be on the bench personally, yeah. But I do enjoy the core be further back as well because mm. I feel like he's there's a lot of players in the Everton team who are kind of scared to shoot on occasions, and I think he just gets in there and just mm. attacks well and a bit of a box the box. But yeah, I think Mangal and Gay they were probably the only good thing that happened in the last game, and they've been they've been a good mm. partnership. So I continue with them personally. Leave them, and then have the core maybe as a sub to come yeah. on. Yeah, with the I'm only thinking. With the height, the mm. height element, Sean Dykes does like the taller players, doesn't he, for the set pieces. And obviously, Everton's main threat is really set plays, isn't it? And mm. just wondering whether or not that would be a consideration for him. But you might be right. He might. I did think Garner and Mangala yeah. were probably the pick of Everton's players last week at Southampton. There wasn't loads to choose from, <laughs> answered, but I thought they were probably the best of the two. What do you think then? Going down there, what are you, what's your early predictions? I won't hold you to it, just a gut yeah, feeling. Like... I think we're going to lose personally. I don't think <laughs> yeah. we, have a, we haven't had a lot of luck in the London Stadium, and I don't mm. think. We did right win thing. there last year, though. Dominic Calvert Loom did score a cracker there last year. Yeah. But... I think as well, Lopetegui's already done his El Sacco with Man United, yeah. and now it's his time for his one with Everton. <laughs> so, whatever, I don't know. You don't know. Be, listen, it's going to be a tricky one, isn't it? Because you can't tell. Because last week I fancied Everton strongly at Southampton. I thought we'll beat them. Because they, without being too disrespectful, I don't see them winning many games of football this season, Southampton. And I really thought we'd go and sort of do what we did to Ipswich, mm -hmm. which was exert our authority and just have too much for them. And we were so we were so passive in our play last week. I don't think we can afford to be like that next day, this week against West Ham, I think. If we go there and just try to do what we did last week, I think they'll batter us. So yeah. we're gonna. That's why I'm saying. I think we. I feel like we've got to change something up. Yeah. Might be match them up the way they they lining up and really get at them. And I think if the manager named Beto and Dom up front or and Jai right alongside Calvin Lewin, and went, no, we're gonna get on the front foot with three at the back. Might give people a. You could certainly give them something to think about, and give people a boost. But excite the fans a bit more as well. Yeah. I think it'll probably just be more of the same, but we'll see, yeah. we'll see. I hope Everton can get a result. It's going to be a very, very difficult game down there in the London Stadium, and obviously it's an international break after this one, and uh, let's go into it on a positive result. Come on, Blues. Go there and win. Just win, will you? <laughs> Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Good video, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. See you later.